All right, we're here at the boat works. Uh, Skipper and Clark uh, worked on gunnels today. And let's talk about the tools we used and materials. The most important thing we used today was um, safety glasses and this uh, 3M 9210 dust mask. I mean, look at the difference between the inside and the outside. And sometimes I wear gloves. Today I didn't long sleeve shirt probably wouldn't have been an idea, bad idea. And what we wanted to do first was cut the uh, gunnels, cut the little strip. Uh, we uh, made it three, eight, three eighths inches wide. And in addition to the, uh, the plank gave us a total of one inch. Could have gone a little thicker, but it is our guesstimate that that would be plenty thick. And plus we had super duper helfer stout quarter knees. But we cut that with our little DeWalt table saw on its stand, uh, rolled it outside, set it up, marked the mahogany, ripped a three inch, three eighth inch strips off of it. And uh, spoiler alert, here's the, uh, here's what we got now. We've shaped the transom, the knee, the inner and outer gunnels little plank in the middle fasten silicone bronze screws. We skipped on the epoxy because once again we thought screws were enough and kind of our mentality on gunnels and rub strips is you know they take a beat and they might need to take them off and replace them someday so why why uh, why glue them on. Shaped the top of the frame a little bit it got trimmed down. Earlier video we told about our Fastening pattern, you know, one outside, one inside, every six inches, except for where we didn't do that. And ran it on back. Trim this down flush, and there's a little bit of a twist to get it back into the rest of the gunnel. Rounded edges and corners along the gunnel, and we actually managed to get both sides. Looks like next we need to do some um, cleanup of this epoxy, a little bit of sanding, and we've got a little bit of fairing over here because we um, got these, kind of a little bit of a feather edge on a plank here, and I'd rather just go ahead and fair it in so that if any water runs down, it just keeps on going down to the bilge and finds a low point in the bilge. Got a couple of limber holes there so water can flow back and forth. So in order to put these uh, gunnels on, we needed some clamps to hold them in place. Well, we got them in position. Then we used a fuller bit, combination counterbore and pilot bit. We used, ended up, tried a bunch of different screws. Old uh, Charlie messed us up. He talked about how these, for him, when he uses these first and head screws, that they strip out and like, no, we really don't have that issue as long as we use an impact driver. <coughs> of course, the first two, three screws I put in all stripped out. So the problem was I wasn't drilling the right depth. And in one case, not using the right bit. This is for a number 10 bit. And this is a number 10 screw. Now that's inch and a quarter. This is a number eight screw, one inch. So this mahogany is pretty hard. So you got to get a good sized uh, pilot hole and uh, counterbore in it. And then use your impact driver with the Frearson bit. And so we did that. We used uh, one inch screws, which ended up poking through a little bit. We talked about that. And then we just uh, sanded off the excess. Let's go out of here for a minute. Watch the storm come in. Started off with this 14 foot piece of mahogany board after we cut quarter knees out of it it's uh, eight inches wide some quarter knees and cut the uh, strips for the gunnel we're down to about a 11 foot board with part of it still being eight inches wide the other part around six and we think that'll make our keel for us so let's uh, back up here and uh, see how St. Jacques doing. Vacuumed all the stuff out yesterday. So of course, being outside today, she's getting all the little leaves and pine needles and pine straw and 
kinds of other fun stuff following in her. But luckily, I have two portable shop packs now, so I can't complain. And uh, she's been living inside because we've got her cover has got damage and it's inside to be repaired. And we've noticed carpenter bees flying around. And I don't want to leave her outside where the carpenter bees can find her. Even though the varnish on the cypress might dissuade them a little bit. But uh, we know from working with a lot of cypress on Barbara Sheila that uh, unvarnished cypress is no problem for them. And those little suckers can drill some of the straightest holes you've ever seen in unfortunate places. But uh, haven't noticed anything on St. Jacques yet. And we did go and buy some carpenter bee traps to kind of encourage them to go to other parts of the property and do their bee thing back there. And now we got her in, the rain can, St. Jock inside, rain can start. There's her little sister, excuse me. There's the new DeWalt shop back. I think I mentioned some photos that couldn't find my Porter Cable batteries because I like my little Porter Cable shop back. Finally gave up and said, well, I got a ton of DeWalt batteries. Get one of those. And less than a day after I uh, ordered the vacuum, I found the uh, Porter Cable batteries. Maybe I did it on purpose. I don't know. But hey, carpenter bees. They're a lot of fun. And this little trap works. The uh, bee is lazy, so it sees a hole that thinks another bee already made. It climbs up in it and drops down through the little plastic tube. And uh, then it takes a siesta. And this one, that was a bee that I used my man skills to kill. And uh, put it in there. The bees put off pheromones that the other bees go looking for. Uh, no one's gone looking for this bee yet. I guess it must be the lonely bee. And uh, but we've got another trap over by the sunfish shack, our wheel deck, and one on the fence where we've seen bee activity. And the one trap in uh, just over one day has collected eight bees. And the one on the fence had three or four last we looked at it. So, so far we seem to be ahead on this evolution. So we'll get the boat works locked up. See if I can get inside before the storm hits. We keep, uh, we put hold, hold downs on the doors so the wind doesn't blow them around. This one's got a little cleat and a bowling. And this door uses uh, Captain Jack's car jack to hold it open. The um, deck, when I put it in, was just a little bit higher than the door. I used to run it through a, a block and a cleat over here. I think once the moisture dries out of this deck, it'll be good. And another project we had was uh, swapping from the uh, Mighty Fine shed lock that came with the shed. We just used just the handle part of it now. We put in a uh, quick set deadbolt that was keyed to our house key. So I can lock myself in the shed now unless Skipper knows where the key is. And we use the, the deadbolt part on the boathouse, and then we use the uh, doorknob part, about a set. Doorknob part on the uh, higher garage next door. And there it goes. Locked up. And then it also has some. Oh, and of course, everything's locked. And there's the board I wanted to put away. If anyone knows a good place to get master locks, I need six of them that are all keyed the same. That'll work in a boat trailer coupler. Post a note. Otherwise, I think it's Amazon and hoping that the, uh, the diameter of the little shaft on the lock is, I think, no more than five, 30 seconds. I think it is. No. Somewhere between one quarter 
Hey, I wrote it down. I took a picture of it, so I'll look at it later. I know it's not any bigger than half inch. I know that. So, oh, dropping a board. It's going to be loud. Poor boatyard practice, but one point. That's what you get with free labor. Why mahogany? Uh, Skipper wanted some weight. This is a light boat, so this is a Sapel mahogany on the keel. We use teak on the seats. Uh, then a little up. That will give us a little bit of weight. Kinda augment the stability. So here comes the rain, and I think I'm done playing outside before the lightning gets here. That about does it.